JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week January the 10th until January the 14th. I am Harlamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, there are no central bank decisions on this week's agenda, but we do have a few data and events that could shape expectations around monetary policy. On Tuesday, Fed Chair Jerome Powell testifies on his uh, nomination for a second term, while a couple of days later, it will be the turn of uh, Leil Brainard, who was appointed as the vice uh, chair. On Wednesday, we have the US CPIs for December, while on Friday, we do get the UK monthly GDP for November. Now let's get uh, uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, today um, appears to be a relatively light day with no major indicators or events on the agenda. Tomorrow seems to be more interesting as Fed Chair Jerome Powell is due to testify before the Senate Banking Committee at a hearing to confirm his nomination uh, to a second term. Fed uh, Governor Leil Brainard is also scheduled to appear uh, before the same committee two days later for a confirmation of her uh, nomination as uh, vice chair. Now on Friday, the US employment report revealed that non-farm payrolls uh, slowed to 199,000 in December from 249,000 in November, missing estimates of an acceleration to 400,000. This resulted in a retreat in the US dollar, but it, it did not change expectations around the Fed's future course, course of action. After all, the unemployment rate tumbled to a 22-month low of 3.9%, while wages accelerated unexpectedly in monthly terms. Now, according to the Fed Fund futures, market participants are still fully pricing in the first quarter point rate increase to be delivered in May, with a decent chance of this happening one or even a couple of months earlier. Many believe that this will happen in March. Therefore, it will be interesting uh, to hear what those two officials have to say, especially with the minutes of the latest gathering, revealing that officials said that the very tight lab or market may warrant sooner rate increases. Brainard, who has been considered uh, who has been considered a dove before her nomination, appeared more hoggish than expected when um, uh, when she was uh, when she was appointed, declaring commitment uh, to getting inflation uh, to getting inflation down. In our view, the risks uh, are uh, for both officials to support a faster than previously assumed rate path. After all, Wednesday CPI data are expected to reveal that inflation has continued to accelerate in December, with the headline rate hitting 7% for the first time since 1992, and the core one rising to 5.4%. Now, anything suggesting a more cautious approach could come as a surprise and perhaps bring the US dollar under strong selling uh, interest. We will also get to hear from several other Fed officials during the week, including Esther George, James Bullard, Loretta Mester, Charles Evans, Thomas Barkin, and John Williams. It will be interesting to hear what they have to say as well, in order to have a clearer picture on the consensus within the committee. Now on Wednesday, as we already noted, we have uh, the US CPIs for December, with both the headline and core rates expected to have risen further. We get more inflation data, though, earlier in the day during the Asian session. This is from China. Both the CPI and PPI rates are expected to have slowed to 1.8 and 11.1% year over year from 2.3 and 12.9% respectively. Now with China, <coughs> excuse me, with China being the second largest economy in the world, this could be a sign that exporting uh, lower inflation could result in a slowdown 
elsewhere as well. However, this is far from a safe uh, conclusion as the nation has adopted a zero tolerance policy with regards to the coronavirus, imposing strict uh, lockdowns in cities, uh, reporting increasing inf infections. This could keep supply chain disruptions, disruptions when well on the table uh, for, a for a longer period of time and perhaps result in even higher inflation around the globe in the, mo in the months to come. So with all that in mind, we don't expect the potential slide in China's CPI and PPI rates to alter the tightening plans of several major central banks around the world. Now on Thursday, the only release worth mentioning on the economic calendar is uh, the, US, uh, the US PPIs for December. Both the headline and core rates are expected to have accelerated as well, adding credence to the CPI forecasts. Usually higher producer prices result in higher consumer prices. However, bearing in mind that we will already have the actual CPI figures in our hand, we do not expect any notable market reaction to the PPIs. Finally, on Friday, we have the UK monthly GDP for November, as well as the industrial and manufacturing production rates for the month. No forecast is available for, uh, for the GDP, but both the industrial and manufacturing uh, monthly rates, manufacturing production monthly rates are expected to have increased to 0.2% month over month from minus 0.6% and 0% respectively. Now our view this could add some credence to market expectations over a rate hike by the Bank of England very soon and some more throughout the year. And thus combined with uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson's remarks um, that there will be no fresh COVID related restrictions, it could it could result in some more uh, GBP buying. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next uh, Monday. If you, are if you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around nine o'clock a.m. GMT. So, Goodbye and have a great uh, rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.